Are you tired that whatever you do, you are not able to break the content width of your WordPress website? Do you want to recreate a nice looking Gribble design? But whatever you try, it doesn't seem to work out to create a sleek two column layout in WordPress. Well, not anymore, because today we're going to end your struggle. I'm going to share four groundbreaking methods to nail the two column layout. But before we dive in, let's go back to where my struggle started. So one day I was just mining in my own business and was scrolling on dribble.com for some inspiration for a new design that I could recreate in Greenshift. I came across a beautiful looking two column layout, but I was wondering how can we create the same layout in WordPress using Greenshift? Let's see the examples and discover why they are working well. So here we have our first example with two columns that are overlapping each other, which works very well. It's a very different kind of design than the traditional design we see, which makes this interesting to look at. Here's the second design. This is a more traditional one where you have a split design and you see the product on the left side and you see the product information on the right side. I think it works very well because you just see in one go what kind of product it is, what the containments are, and you can add it very easily to your card. Here we have our next example. It's a testimonial list. And on the left side, you will see a big image. I'm assuming that is the person and the dog, what this is about. And it works very well because this is a nice looking split design where the testimonials are about the person. Here's our fourth example with a fresh looking section of a website instead of a heading where you see a product image and a product section. This is a very nice looking product section where you have the text going around the image and you see a very nice looking product picture and design. And on the right side, you will see what the containments are for this flavor, for this drink. On our fifth design, although this is a part of the full hero concept, I think we can also see some kind of breaking the contents going on here that the image will go off screen on a small sized layout. And here we have our last example where we have information on the left side and some links on the right side. I think this is a very interesting design choice and it breaks a little bit the columns but gives you enough information as well on what they do and how you can contact them. So why use a two column layout? It's a very efficient way to show and tell. Show a product and then tell a little bit about it. It also creates a hierarchy with the left side being important and the right side being supplementary. It's also very great for responsive design and you can play around with the design aesthetics. Now that we have seen the great examples and understand why they are working well, let's get into the foreground breaking methods to recreate a sleek two column layout like we have seen in the examples. So let's get to it. If you like to, you can follow along by downloading the assets. You can find the description down below. And while you're scrolling down, please hit the like button. You can download the assets by entering a fair price. If you would like to support me, you can put in any price you would like. You can also put in zero and you get it for free. Set it to add to cart, press get, and you can download the assets if you would like to. So let's have a look at our first method that I use the most to break out of the WordPress content with. So let's add a row and select a two column layout. Let's add a, our content in there as well. So first off a heading and then secondly we will add a text paragraph. On the right side I want to show an image. But first let's set our row width to full width. And now you can see that the contents is outside of the contents of the website and we want this section to be inside. So to change that, we select our row and select the content width to boxed. But as you see, nothing changes. So why is that? It doesn't change because the template of the single posts has a different size than the one in Greenshift. So let's go to your site editor and then use single post templates then go to styles, then go to layout. And there we see that our content width, normal width is 748. So let's copy the value and paste it in here. Let's hit save. And if we save this one as well, and then refresh, you will see it has our updated value. Now it looks a little bit off and we can fix that by changing the spacing. Zero to all sections. So now it aligns nicely right so let's go to our row 
and add a background to it so that we can show it on the left side. So let's upload our image. And this is an image that you can use for free. It's an AI generated image created by CodeDrops. I will leave a link down in the description and you can see it for yourself. So let's select this image. And as you can see, it's now full width, but we want it to be one on the left. We don't want to repeat and we want to change the size. So let's change the Y value to 50%. Now you can see it's nicely set to half of the size and I set it to 98, but I want to be 100%. And now, as you can see, aligns nicely with the content and the image can stretch out as far as it wants. This can also work well with a background color. So let's duplicate this one. So instead of an image, you can select a background color as well. See, reset backgrounds to be a red color like that one. We want to add a gradient at one section to be transparent and the one other needs to be 100% visible. Then we set the spacing between them as centered as possible and change the angle to 90 degrees. And you can play around with where you want to start and end. And as you can see, now we have a two column layout with the right section to have another color. So for the next method, you can use something like a margin, a negative margin. This does mean you need some knowledge on how far off the margin is to the right. So for instance, if you have a full page website, so you don't have a um, boxed value, so let's change that to have the full width. We don't want to be to have the background color anymore. So we can reset the background values and add our image in here. Our image, there we go. And we will select our image. And now it's in there. And as you can see, there's a spacing on the right side. And to remove the spacing, you can set the uh, margin negative to the amount of spacing you have on the right side. And it will automatically fill the gap. So the next one is the one recommended by Igor from Greenshift. Let's just duplicate this one. Why make it more difficult than it needs to be, right? So let's duplicate the first one, put it on last. And instead of a background image, he suggests that you play around with some settings. So let's add a image in here as well. I need to type it right. Sometimes it's very hard. Media library. Let's add the image. And what he recommends is that you set the absolute position and then the site you want to extend to, to zero. Now, I don't see it working at all, actually. So perhaps we have to set our absolute zero. There we go. So you set the left side absolute to zero. And then you have also the content breaking of the image. And that's add afterwards <laughs> let's add some spacer blocks and let's add a css grid of containers now this one is now becoming my most favorite one but it needs a little bit more of knowledge so let's set this one to full width and we want to change our custom template grid what we'd like to set our custom template grid to is set the first one to auto, which means it auto creates the rows. Uh, the first section needs to be one fraction and the second section needs to be half of the global content width from WordPress. Now I did a lot of research and I found that the content width is set in a variable and we want half of that for our second section. So this is the variable we are going to use. We set it to half because we want it to cover half of the size. We also want the second section also to cover half of its size. And then we have one fraction. And as you can see, it nicely aligns with the content as well. So now we can just duplicate our heading and duplicate our power graph. And it stays nicely inside of the content width. And here we can add our image that we would like to have in there as well. As you can see, it's still in the second column. And you can change that by selecting your CSS grid and change the grid options. So this one can be removed. This one can also be removed because we don't need that. And this one, number three, contains the image. So what we can do is stretch that to the outer. So here's the solution for the last method. And it's my favorite method. 
it comes from Kevin Powell. He shows how to do this with, with CSS. And as you can see, we just need two containers. The first one is in the column of the content and the second one is stretching to the edge of the screen. Now, what are the downsides of the other solutions that I have in here? So for the first one, if we have some smaller content, you will see that the image shrinks significantly and that's something we don't like. Now with the red background color, I don't see any issues. With the solution of the negative margin, you need to know what the spacing is you're using on the right side or on the side where you want the image to go. And that one doesn't always work well because sometimes you have the margin set to outer, which means all your contents will center and you don't know how much margin there is left on the right side. Then you have the solution that Greenshift provides with the absolute position. And I don't like that one because it overlaps your content. As you can see, we need to add some spacers before it works well. You can also do that by adding a margin to the top and the bottom, but you never know how much margin you will need depending on the size of the image. So you need to play around with this one. And that's why I really love the CSS grid solution because the CSS grid solution allows me to add the image and it can expand wherever it needs to go. And you have the contents within the content section as well. You need to have this formula in there and the formula will be in the description down below. And while you're down there, please hit the subscribe button if you really like this video. So that's it. Those are the four methods you can use. Which one do you think is coming from AI? Leave a comment in the comment section and let me know. So now you have seen some very well designed two column layout examples. You understand that using them can break up the layout, but can also be very interesting if designed properly. And it's very easy to recreate them yourselves. A two column layout is one of the many ways you can create an interesting web design. But one of the most trending web designs at this time is a Bender Grid design. Watch this video to see how you can create a Bender Grid design in Greenshift. And if you're still watching, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get more of these kinds of tutorials from Greenshift. Until next time, keep designing.